Hey guys, YouTuber100 here. Alright, now here I am to continue on with my reviews for the Planet of the Apes movies. And now, here I am with a review for Beneath the Planet of the Apes. So, you know, before I start off with this review, I just want to say once again, I'm sorry that it's taken me like a little while, once again, to um, make another review for these movies. Because, yeah, like I... Because if you watch my review for the first movie, they, I did say that I was going through, like, something that I recently had put my dog down prior to that. And so that was why it took me a little while to get going. And I said at the end of the, the review that I was now going to get, like, into gears and, like, like get a couple of these reviews and, like, make them more often. And it's been a little while since I have, but, yeah, just, yeah, I'm sorry about it. Just, yeah, for the last few days, basically, like... Like, since this past Tuesday, I've, like, been, like, kind of sick off and on. I've been having, like, some stomach problems as of late, and I just really haven't been, like, in the right condition to really, like, make any videos as of late. But, yeah, I'm, do I'm feeling better now, so, yeah. Hopefully now I can now get back into getting into the gears and just, like, getting, like, through these reviews. So, yeah, hopefully now I'll actually be true to my word, and, yeah, now I will, like, actually get back into gear with these Planet of the Apes reviews. Alright, but anyway, so here I am with a review from Beneath the Planet of the Apes. So, um... I actually thought that this was a pretty decent film, I'd say. I mean, yeah, all of the sequels for the, well, the, ori the original Planet of the Apes series, uh, pretty much all, none of the sequels really were, like, they really were not that well received. I mean, they were, none of them really did, like, really, like, really, really awful or anything, but really just... The sequels really did have, like, a pretty mixed reaction overall. I mean, none of them really did, like, do nearly as good as the uh, first film did at all. So, yeah, I really don't know, like, what it is that these, just, what it is people really, like, d couldn't get into these films that they couldn't get into the original for. But, I mean, I actually thought that, as far as this one goes, I felt that it was a decent film. I mean, this film pretty much does continue on with the story from the first film, and I think that it actually does a pretty decent job in telling, like, this part of the story and really just continuing on with the events from the first film. I mean, I actually did think that it was a pretty interesting premise of this film. Yeah, in this film, um, it's kind of like it's taking, like, pretty much another type of story arc in this, uh, for this, uh, film and the, the story. In this film, the premise is that there's another astronaut, um, uh, Brent, that has, like, his ship has crash landed onto the island, and apparently, like, he actually does, uh, he was, like, sent to search for Taylor, and apparently, like, he actually does know Taylor some way. Yeah, it's not actually ever revealed, like, how Brent actually does know Taylor, but in this film, yeah, he's, like, he's, like, been sent to the, just sent to, like, really search, search for Taylor and stuff. And so, yeah, his ship ends up, like, crash landing on the, uh, on the planet, and yeah, basically in this film, Brent goes through the same thing that Taylor did in the first film, really how he is in the planet and he sees it's populated by apes, and he really does he's not aware that he's really in the far distant future of the Earth, and yeah, he eventually does, does like, realize that it is future Earth, and yeah, basically, like, he's, like, goes through exactly the same thing that Taylor did in the first film, so, well, yeah, and in this film, like, you do have, like, the recurring characters, like, uh, you have, uh, Cornelius Zira and Dr. Zeus back, and you also have Anova back, and, uh, Taylor, he's in this film also, but his r role in this film, it is, like, really limited, I mean, it's not like in the first film how he is, like, the main character, yeah, in this film, yeah, Brent's really the main character, main, you know, human character in this film. Taylor, he's just really a supporting character in this film. At the start of this film, like, he ends up, um, uh, just, he just disappears out of nowhere. 
era after like there's this um yeah there's like this all like the sudden fire that shoots up and yeah and they're just showing how like there are these uh chasms that have opened up and then as Taylor investigated he just ended up like disappearing and stuff and it wasn't revealed what happened to him until the end of the film and so oh well uh, yeah yeah and so yeah Taylor has a very very brief role in the film and yeah he's still like played by Charlton Heston yeah the cast members from the original film they all like really do reprise their roles in this like uh, Linda Harrison and is still Nova, and yeah, I have a uh, David Watson, Kim Hunter, and Murray Sevens as Cornelia Zira and Zeus, and yeah, we do like just still have, like, of course, like it's all still like the characters are mostly apes and stuff. So, yeah, and yeah, like I said, review for the first film, yeah, the yeah, so it just really doesn't the makeup really just looks really off like when they have to talk it just really looks like puppets i mean there's no like mouth movements or anything it's just they move up and down and stuff so yeah they still got that problem in this so yeah but i mean for the story that this film does tell i do think that it is told like pretty decently i mean like i said i thought it was a good continuation story for the uh for, for the first film and so yeah, in this film, like, uh, Brent and Nova, like, are, like, journeying together, because, yeah, Brent ends up meeting Nova, and, yeah, Nova is still, like, a real silent, a uh, real, a uh, mute, <laughs> yeah, at the, around, like, the end of this film, she th actually does finally speak, and when she does scream Taylor, and so, yeah, I guess, like, it's, like, a little a bit more of a character development for, uh, Nova, and, yeah, Brent, he's like a, I thought he was just fine, I mean, I didn't mind him as a new main character for this film. I mean, I thought he did just fine, I mean, he went through, like, basically the same, same type of story that uh, Taylor did in the first film. And so, yeah, but, yeah, there really isn't, like, anything going on between, like, Brent and Zira, or, like, anything between him and the apes and stuff, yeah. In this film, I'm also, um... It's shown that the apes are, are like, planning to, um, like, invade the, the, uh, Forbidden Zone, which is where a Taylor and Nova had traveled to at the end of the first film. Um, and, yeah, the apes are just, like, planning to conquer it and basically just are wanting to destroy it, pretty much. And so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, the apes in this film are like, yeah, they're an army to conquer the Forbidden Zone. They're like led by uh, General Ursus, and so yeah, he's leading the ra rally of apes to like just conquer the Forbidden Zone and stuff. And so, yeah, that's really what this film is really about. Just really how the apes are really just wanting to really just conquer any of the humans and stuff, and they just want really want to really take over the Forbidden Zone and everything. And so, yeah, that's pretty much, like, what this is about, really, just the stuff with, uh, Brent really just looking for Taylor and, like, his, the stuff between him and Nova, and then, you yeah, know, we do get the stuff with the apes and the Forbidden Zone stuff, and so, yeah, I think it's just fine. I mean, it's not really, like, anything, like, anything like really spectacular like the first film was but as a continuation for the story for the first film I think it is told like pretty decently so yeah is it good well I don't know if it, I can really actually say good but I do think it's decent I mean yeah it didn't really get the best reaction from critics or audiences but I think it is like better than it, it's given credit for honestly so yeah I do think it, it is a decent film I'd say I would give it probably I don't know Two and a half stars out of four, I mean, it is a pretty decent film. I mean, if you're curious to, like, see, like, the events from the first one continued, I would recommend watching this film. I mean, I do think that it is worth a viewing. I mean, I thought that it was worth an hour and a half, and, yeah, I think you'll get the, what, I think you'll get, like, something that is worth your time also. So, yeah, if you haven't seen this film before, I would say check it out and just see for yourself, of, like, how this 
pans out as a continuation story for the first film. I do think it is a decent flick. Okay, so, yeah. I really haven't really like given a very good description of it so far, so yeah, let me just get right into the story. Alright, so the film basically opens up just about right where the first film had ended, and they do, like, replay, like, the final scene from the first film at, where, uh, Taylor and Nova are riding through the desert of the Forbidden Zone and stuff, and then it does, like, show that the another ship has crash-landed and handed onto the planet, and Brent was the only survivor of the, on the ship. Yep. And, yeah, just like Taylor in the first film, he thought, he, of course, like, th thought that he had traveled to a different planet. And then, Brent eventually then, like, encountered Nova, and he, he saw that she was wearing, like, Taylor's dog tags, and as he was, like, trying to ask Nova where Taylor was, then it, like, it feels like it was, like, flashing back to, in Zero's mind, I mean, not Zero, Nova's mind, and it just showed her, like, just doing, like, various things with Taylor, and then it did show, like, as they were riding along, it just showed that fire, fire ended up, like, shooting up out of nowhere, and then, like, just has them opened up out of the ground. And then, yeah, Taylor then was just, like, starting to investigate a, a wall, and then he just all of a sudden disappeared. Heard, yeah. And, yeah. And then, of course, like, Brent was trying to ask Nova where Taylor was, but, of course, like, Nova didn't speak. And so then, and, yeah. Nova, uh, Brent then just ended up arriving with, uh, Nova back to the Ape City, and then he, like, saw the Simeon civilization, and he then saw the, the general, uh, Ursus, then just, like, talking about conquering the Forbidden Zone, and he just wanted to use it as his own food source and take over it. Over it, yeah. And... After uh, Brent and Nova ended up, like, being spotted by a soldier, he then, like, Brent ended up, like, being wounded by the soldier, and then Nova ended up uh, taking uh, Brent to uh, Cornelius and Zira to treat his wound, and then, yeah, uh, Brent was then just telling uh, uh, Cornelius and Zira, like, who he was, and he was looking for Taylor. And then, yeah, they were telling uh, Brent that about their time with Taylor, and, yeah, then, like, they were just trying to help, uh, uh, Brent basically, like, blend in with their, uh, world, and, yeah, they gave him, like, a change of clothes to make it, him look like one of their, uh, human captives, and, yeah, they also told him not to talk around any apes, because if he did get caught talking, then he would basically just be, uh, dissected and basically just destroyed, pretty much. So, yeah, and eventually a doctor of uh, Zeus arrived, and and he just then told uh, Cornelius and Zero that he would be accompanying Ursus to invade the Forbidden Zone. And then as Brent and Nova were, like, trying to flee from the city, they ended up eventually being captured by the apes. And, then, yeah... Then, after they were captured, our Ursus then just ordered them to be used for target practice, but with the help of Zero, they were able to escape. Ape. And they eventually ended up, like, hiding in a cave, and then, like, inside that cave, Brent discovered that it was actually the ruins of the Queensboro Plaza station, station of the New York City subway. So then that's when Brent then realized that he was actually, like, time-traveled through into uh, the post-apocalyptic future of Earth and stuff, yeah. And then, like, like, eventually, like, Brent then, like, was hearing, like, a humming sound in the underground tunnels, tunnels of the cave, and so then, that's when uh, Brent then was, like, starting to hear some voices in his head, that were basically telling him to kill Nova. 
But eventually, like, they ended up finding the remains of the St. Patrick's Cathedral. And then, yeah, that's when, uh, Brent then ended up, like, finding, like, a population of telepathic humans that, like, or worship, a nu an ancient nuclear bomb. So, yeah, and then, yeah, these, uh, telepathic humans then just, like, use their, uh, telepathic powers to just control other people and stuff. And so, yeah, and it was, like, later on used on, uh... Brent and Taylor once like they found each other and stuff and they got into a fight. Yeah, I'll get to that later, but yeah Yeah, and eventually like those uh telepathic humans end up capturing Brent and Nova Nova and then the uh And then um they're the they ended up, like, being, uh, interrogated by, by the, uh, telepath's leadership under Mendez, and then they were, like, explaining themselves to just be descendants of humans that survived nuclear holocaust and, uh, mutated over generations. And, yeah, they were just, like, claiming to be a, uh, peaceful society, despite that they do use mind control and illusions on enemies. But they ended up, like, really just forcing Brent into revealing, like, the Apes March on the Forbidden Zone. And then, yeah, they were, like, trying to just use their, um, telepathic powers. <clears throat> powers to try to, like, give them illusions of fire and, and just other horrors, but they ended up failing because a uh, Dr. Zeus ended up like seeing right through it. And then, yeah, with the the apes then were starting to like close in on the forbidden zone and then yeah, then the telepaths then just had, were then like planning to just detonate their divine bomb as they referred to it as a last resort. Right, and then as they were holding like a ritual Role, they then eventually ended up like removing like the human skin mask that they had on and then it was revealed that their actual faces were like like just malformed skinless faces <clears throat> and that they were like and it was just caused of from a generations of radiation exposure so yeah they like had these uh malformed like like mutated creature faces and stuff <clears throat> and then yeah as the uh telepaths then we're just uh like taking uh nova and brent to separate cells hells uh brent was taken to his own cell and he was actually ended up being locked up with taylor and then and, like, as they, like, were then just, like, talking with each other, like, it was shown that they do know each other. And they're then a, another mutant, uh, Ongaro, is that how it said? That, yeah, just was, like, explained that they can't let them leave the city alive. And so then, Ongaro just was using his uh, telepathic powers to make Brent and Taylor fight each other to kill each other. So, yeah, they got into, like, a really brutal physical fight and stuff. And then, like, he ended up, like, throwing a some type of weapon in the, the cell to, for them to just use that on each other. And, yeah, Nova then eventually ended up escaping her guard and running to the cell. And as she saw uh, Brent and Taylor fighting, then she just ended up just screaming, Taylor. And so, yeah, that ended up just breaking up. On girl's concentration and then yeah Brent and Taylor were then freed from his control and then they were able to team up together and they eventually ended up like killing uh, on girl and then yeah Brent then just then was like telling uh, Taylor about the bomb and yeah he was just like describing it as <laughs> Ivan the bomb to have a uh, Greek letters Alpha and Omega on the casting and so then that's when a uh, Taylor recognized their uh, bomb as a doomsday bomb as he referred to it and it was actually capable of destroying the entire planet 
So you yeah, have it's basically like a Death Star weapon. <sighs> yeah. Then eventually the apes then and ended up invading the uh, city, and yeah, they just ended up making their way into the cathedral. Cathedral, and then they ended up like just fighting off the mutants that they just ended up like being captured and killed and all that stuff and yeah during the whole thing like as uh brent uh taylor and nova were then like just trying to make their way out of the city nova then ended up like being killed in the commotion and, and stuff uh, yeah after like i think an ape shot and it hit Nova or something, and yeah, she just basically ended up being killed. So, and yeah, Taylor and Brent then eventually ended up like reaching the cathedral. Cathedral, and Mendez ended up like being shot dead after he raised the bomb into the activation position. And yeah, they were trying, the humans then were like just trying to stop Ursus from accidentally sending off the weapon. Then and but Taylor ended up like being you know spotted and he ended up like being shot and yeah Z was then just like just wasn't listening to any of uh Taylor's pleas and yeah Brent then was like just trying to fight off all the apes and stuff but eventually like the apes overpowered uh Taylor and basically just ended up gunning him down and br really brutally killing him and so then yeah that's when then Taylor then just ended up like, as he was, like, collapsing, basically, to his death, he just, then just ended up, like, raising his arm, and as he was falling, he then ended up, up, like, hitting the activation switch, which ended up, like, triggering the bomb, and, yeah, we didn't actually see what happened, but, yeah, it was just, like, whiting out, and just, we heard, like, a voiceover narration saying, In one of the countless billions of galaxies in the universe lies a medium-sized star and one of its satellites. A green and insignificant planet is now dead. So, yeah. Yeah, and this would really make you think as if, like, the way that this ended with, like, basically the world being destroyed, pretty much, this would make you think that, maybe, like, this was just, this was the end, and we weren't going to get anything else. But after this, like, they still ended up making, like, three other sequels, which were, like, pretty interesting. And how would they, like, follow up after this? Well, I... That's what I, we got the next reviews for, so, yeah, in my next reviews, we'll find out what they ended up doing after this and where they went from here, so, yeah, but, yeah, that's how this film ended, it just, like, ended like that, so, kind of a, a an interesting way to end it, how you don't really see what happens, but you do know, and you just have that, like, like, last narration for it, so, yeah, and, yeah, I just found this, like, really, like, really strange just because i mean you have like the main characters like being killed off you had a uh, taylor being killed brent was killed and nova was killed and yeah we've and yeah we do know what happened to the rest of the apes as well after like how this film ended so yeah yeah so yeah i just found that this was a little strange like it was making it seem like this was really going to be the end and then they weren't going to do anything else with this with these films but yeah like i said they ended up making three more after this which were like not really like following up in this film but yeah like kind of like telling like different stories which yeah like i said i'll get into next time but yeah i just felt that this was a really interesting way to end it just killing basically like everyone from the first film like the main characters end up being killed off so yeah and this was really like the last we would see of them and really so yeah i just found that to be really interesting and so, yeah, like I said, two and a half stars out of four. I mean, yeah, not really, like, anywhere on the level of the first film, but it, I think it does do, do its job as a continuation story from the first film well enough. So, yeah, like I said, if you haven't seen this before, I would recommend it if you are, like, curious enough to really see, like, how the events from the first film do continue on in this film, because I do think it is told pretty decently. Alright, so, yeah, that does it for, so, yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say about it, so, yeah, that does it for my review of Beneath the Planet of the Apes, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and stay tuned as I do, like, I will continue on with these Planet of the Apes reviews, and hopefully now I actually can, like, just skim through these and really just, 
make these reviews more often so I can just get through these and get to the second part of what I, my plans are for this month. So, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this review, so, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.